Hello, this is a short demo on how to use Oracle's VirtualBox Manager to create virtual PC on your host system, on your existing Windows system. And in this way, you can install multiple operating systems and use them for different purposes, organize your work and so on. What uh, VirtualBox allows you to do is to install as many operating systems as, as much as hard drive space you have. And if you want to run simultaneously multiple operating system, then you need more RAM or you can run as many operating system as much RAM you have. So for example, here I have 16 gigabytes of RAM, so I can if I allocate one gigabyte of RAM for each operating system, maybe I can run 15 uh, virtual machines, virtual computer, virtual operating systems, and one my host operating system, because uh, my host operating system might need one gigabyte. But uh, anyway, but that is for simultaneous running. But if you're running one operating system at a time, then you can have as many operating systems as you like, as many as much hard drive space you have to accommodate that. So in order to do that, what you need is a software from virtualbox.org and you can just go into this URL and go to downloads. And since I'm using a Windows host, I can download this link and then I can just click on next, next and it will get installed. That would be fine, no problem. And you will have this window where you can uh, create virtual machines. So in order to create a virtual machine here, you need a ISO file or installer. So I'm going to install Linux. So for a very user-friendly Linux is Linux Mint. Currently, this is the most popular one and very compatible. And as I've mentioned earlier that RAM is a constraint here. So uh, we would like to choose a Linux distribution that would not require too much RAM. If you don't have enough RAM, then you can choose a distribution that is lightweight. For example, XFCE-based desktop environment is uh, known to be lightweight, simple, and faster than the compatible, comparing other desktop environments. So in order to download that, what you can do is go to Downloads and in Linux Mint. And here you will have all the flavors of Linux Mint, one of which is XFC. And since I have 64-bit processors, I can just download 64-bit. And since I'm in Germany, so I would choose a German mirror. And I can just click Save. Half, uh, so this will take a couple of minutes to get downloaded. When it get, finishes downloading, then I'll come back and continue from there. Okay, so this is downloaded now. So we can use this ISO image that I have just downloaded in order to install Linux. So to install that Linux distribu distribution, now you need to create a virtual machine in your VirtualBox manager. To do that, you can click on new and then it will ask you what type of operating system you want to install. So you can choose Linux. And since Linux Mint is based on Ubuntu, which is also based on Debian, so you, you can either choose Ubuntu or Debian. And since we have downloaded 64-bit version, so we will choose 64-bit. And we'll give a name like test system. And click next. And so, as I have mentioned earlier, that you need to allocate a <clears throat> amount of memory for this particular virtual machine. So here, I, since I have enough RAM, I can allocate two gigabyte or more easily. But <clears throat> it depends on your own system. If you have less RAM, then allocate less RAM. Since we have downloaded XFC for this example, it will not require too much RAM, but you can check it up with the 
operating system documentation to find out exactly how much RAM it requires and use that kind that amount of RAM. <coughs> then you need to create a virtual hard drive that will keep all your files. This is a and this virtual hard drive will make up a file in your hard drive, real hard drive, and that file will be used as a hard drive for the virtual machine. So let's see how that works. So <clears throat> let's create one and click next. And we want dynamically allocated, so click next. So here the default value is 8 gigabyte, but we want more than 8 gigabyte because uh, Linux usually requires between 5 to 7 gigabyte of hard drive space to be installed, and we want to make a swap drive also so that Linux can use that drive when it's running low on RAM. So <clears throat> we may need maybe 10 gigabyte is okay enough for this example and we can create so you can check the settings of this newly created system and here you have a number of other settings that you can change for example <clears throat> you can choose whether you want to share the port with your host system from my windows 8 to my linux or not and here you can change the allocated memory or the boot order for example in case of here i want to boot from the dvd image that i have not just downloaded so i would put floppy down and maybe i can even disable floppy because i'm not going to use floppy so the boot order would be fast cd or dvd then boot from hard drive or i can increase the number of cpus because i have more cpus so i can just use that and in case of display memory this is like the video card settings so i can have more video memory and i want to enable 3d acceleration and such settings like that you can uh, check this uh, check the other settings that you we have here and then if you click run then this system will run <coughs> now on the first time run it will ask for a dvd or a cd to boot from so that you can install the system so the nice thing about that is that you don't really need to need to write the dvd image into a dvd you can just show that dvd image so to do that click on here and show the dvd image and then click start and it will start your linux mint in a live cd mode where you can test the system so on the boot menu click down or up keys and then enter on the start Linux Mint. Uh, if you have a different type of machine, maybe if it doesn't work, then you can try, the, try to start it in compatibility mode. But uh, in, for most cases, since it's virtual machine, it should work with Linux Mint normal start. And then it will get the test machine, I mean live machine without any installation. Uh, it will start a live machine 10 seconds so this is the default resolution the window size is changed based on the default resolution so <clears throat> now this is how Linux Mint XFC version looks like this is how it will look like when you when you will install it on your hard drive so to do that, to click on the this icon on the desktop, install Linux Mint, and it will start a wizard that you can follow to get the system installed. English language is okay. To continue. So you need to make sure that you have this much hard drive space. Your system is plugged into power source properly, and it's connected to internet because it might want to download some packages on the uh, during the installation time. So here you can just use the whole default partitioning system that will erase all the data from your disk. But just to show how to create partitions in Linux systems, I will do something else. I'll choose this something else option and share from there. Here, this is the hard drive that is empty hard drive, the 10 gigabyte hard drive that you have just created for the virtual machine. So in order to make partitions in that, you need to have some partition table. 
<coughs> so click on the partition table and continue and then you will have some free space where you can make new partitions so as i said before that we want to make a swap drive so click on the plus and i want to make a swap drive at the end of this space and since the swap drive is like an extension to the ram it will only be used when you have less ram when the ram is not enough so maybe for a example system 512 megabyte may be enough <clears throat> but it depends on what you want to do and use it as a swap area choose it from here and then ok and it will create a swap area <clears throat> then again on the free space you want to create a new partition and make it primary partition and use all the rest of the space for root root is the main um, directory for all the linux file system i mean all the folders and files is under root so if you choose the mount point as root then everything will be in this partition including your home documents and everything <coughs> so for this example to make things simple enough this should work so just click and the, the format of the partition you can choose from different formatting system but extension 4 is the most tested one for most linux distribution if you're in doubt for linux extension 4 is a pretty good choice so other than that you can use jfs or xfs but anyway <coughs> click ok and then this is the partition layout and now you can say that choose install this and all the files will get installed in proper way so click on install now and it will ask for only three more settings i think the time zone and username and this kind of password and this kind of simple settings and the installation is already has begun so no problem So here the time zone, I'm in this time zone, so no problem, continue. Uh, the keyboard layout, that's also fine, English keyboard, no problem, continue. And I can choose my name. <coughs> so it says that my password is too short, but for a virtual machine it's okay. I'm not looking for security here, but if you're installing a real system, then maybe you should check out yourself make your password stronger <clears throat> then continue and then you can just look at the progress until it completely finishes the installation okay so the installation is finished now and now it's asking you to restart the system to do that you can just click on restart and then it will automatically unmount the dvd iso the dvd image which means that it will push out the dvd from dvd drive <coughs> but since there is no dvd drive here it will just release that file and after that it will ask you to press enter so click on restart now And, and the screen is frozen apparently all of these linux distributions have this small glitch that at this screen it should show a message for you to press enter that would make sure that the dvd is already released but that message is not visible because of some sort of incompatibility with virtualbox <coughs> so press enter at this screen anyway and it will work so press enter and it will automatically restart and this time since there is no dvd in the dvd room so it will start you your real installation that you have just installed so i have this login now so log in here with your password and this is the real linux installation i don't need this and you can just shut down from here
So this is the uh, way this is the way you can install Linux. But where does it really get installed? If you want to know that, then you can check it from here. You can go to file and go to preferences, and it will show you that default machine folder is in this directory. So if you check that directory, in my machine this is D drive extra and then virtual box. Here you'll see that it has created a folder. Inside that folder, you have a 4.5 gigabyte size of file. This file is, a, is the dynamically allocated virtual disk that contains all the file that you have installed in order to install the Linux. So if you ever need to move this fold, need to move this machine to another machine in order for it to work or anything, you can just carry around this folder and it should work properly if you didn't delete anything inside <coughs> or anything like that. So that's about it. Try it out and let me know if it works properly. Thanks for listening.